Wow, it's so terrific to see all these amazing faces in this room, each face having a memory of something we've done together. Um, it's just terrific. Thank you all for being here. This is an amazing day. So welcome, Governor Shelman. Thank you for being here. Project partners, legislators, advocates, retreat employees, board members of the retreat, community supporters. Thank you, Judith, for being here. My talk will take 540 seconds. That's what I've been told by Constantine is my limit. <laughs> so, and at the beginning, uh, it took years to accomplish this, so I think 540 seconds is not too much to ask for. I can have all that. Thank you. <laughs> Granted by the governor in a proclamation. Well, let me try to give some context to today, the meaning of today. Many of us in the room, perhaps if not all of us, have grown up with a sibling, a parent, a grandparent, an aunt, a favorite uncle, who suffered from mental illness. We have personally experienced the stigma, the, the ignorance, and the pain lived by our loved ones. We know that the sense of imperfection they lived with mirrors the challenges we have in creating systems to care for them. Our journey is always to make the next day an improvement on the day before. Last Friday, when we opened this unit up for our employees to come and take a look around, um, there were many emotions in the room, including my own, remembering people and envisioning the relationships that we grew up with, with people who were challenged by mental illness. Today, we honor and celebrate the hopes and courage of that generation and those who follow us, that no person who suffers from mental illness will be deprived of the right to overcome the last bit of stigma left in society of a disease that is ubiquitous in the experience of all Americans. Now some history. August 29th, 2011, many people in this room will never forget that day. We convened Incident Command Center at 9 o'clock in that morning following a call from the governor's office and Christine Oliver, the mental health commissioner. And they were, we were asked if we could take the transfer of Vermont State Hospital patients due to the closure at that moment by the flood from Tropical Storm Irene. By 9.30 that night, we met with employees from our admissions team and a bus carrying 16 Vermont State Hospital patients was supporting Vermont State Hospital employees. These patients were, in many cases, frightened and upset by the day that they had been through. I wrote at the time in my administrative journal, we can only imagine the difficulty of being ill of being hospitalized and then going through a natural disaster in an evacuation for some patients leaving behind things that they, the only possessions they had in the world. Patients who had been on our newly opened LGBT unit were dispersed throughout the hospital as the LGBT unit, unit was really our only option at the time for the VSH patients. The LGBT unit staff committed themselves to VSH patients in a unique and powerful show of selflessness. Thank you, Eileen Glover, if you're here, the manager, and Dr. Corey No, the unit chief, and any unit staff from LGBT. September 2nd, I wrote in my administrative journal, and uh, we're getting, is this you calling me? No, I'm staying No, you're staying on this one. Oh, good, it's not you. Okay, that's good. Uh, I wrote in my administrative journal, everyone worked hard and together to ensure the safety of all patients. And those already here and those being transferred to us were all well taken care of. October 20th, 2011, Governor Shumlin announced his plan for closing Vermont State's hospital, which included the, the intent to establish a long-term agreement with the retreat for 14 acute beds. April 4th, 2012, the legislators worked together to pass House Bill 630, which was then signed by Governor Shumlin. Many of us here were in that room that day. It was an act re relating to reforming Vermont's existing mental health system to create the new treatment opportunities for individuals with mental health conditions. The governor stated, this crisis is an opportunity to rebuild our mental health services to make them better than before. That's just what we intend to do. Key members of both legislative branches and the government governor stood side by side with providers, advocates, embracing the beginning of a new day for Vermont. March 22nd, 2012, keeping our promise to reopen the LGBT unit on Osgood II, we renovated our former universal, uh, uniform service program on Linden Street and moved all our adolescent residential 
uh, patients from Osgood 3, Robin, into the community, which we wanted them there anyway. Right? That left Osgood 3 available. So we transferred patients from this floor, and you'll see the before and after pictures down there, or the yesterday and today, to Osgood 3, and we began to consider the renovations for this unit. Keeping our promise, the LGBT unit officially opened on March 22nd of last year. And on every, any given day since the closure of Vermont State Hospital, 26 patients who meet the criteria for placement at Vermont State Hospital would, will be, would have been here and are here in our hospital. Our thanks also to the Tyler II units. They have carried many of the lion's share outside of this about outside of our BSH unit to care for these patients. And I think uh, Lee Reeves, the manager, may be here. Dr. Mark McGee, the unit chief, and Dr. Tim Rowland, and Sarah Schwartz, who's the, the clinical social worker in that unit. August 24th, in his weekly update, 2012, then Commissioner Patrick Flood, who I think I saw. The white, there he is back there, Patrick. <laughs> said, as we approach the one-year anniversary of Irene, it's both exhausting and exciting to see where we are and where we're headed. The crisis still exists. But every part of the system has stood up to work. And the retreat has taken a major role, also providing forensic evaluations for all the patients throughout the system. So the summary, since August 2011, we've seen more than 315 individuals admitted to the retreat who just 20 months ago would have been a admitted to Vermont State Hospital. We pushed forward with our renovation plans. We met many challenges for a safer hospital. And we will de demonstrate that on any given day, we will rise to the challenge to meet all requirements. Today, we move forward. The day marks a significant step forward, shared goal of a cohesive mental health system. And the opening of the, this unit is part of the bigger picture of what lies ahead of us. For those standing here today, I, I hope that you will Bring your hopes and dreams with it with you. This is a beautiful new space. It needs the, your aura in it as we open again. Looks are deceptively simple. Everywhere there are many safety devices. Talk to the people who have been involved in making this unit safe. <coughs> but remember too, we start here today. Tomorrow's another day. Today is the beginning of how we make it safe, and then tomorrow we go forward and we look what else we might do with this unit. We imagine ourselves and want to be and wish to be an innovative hospital that every day looks for new opportunities to become better. So let me acknowledge some people in the room. Paul Capcari, you're the manager of this unit. Good luck to you. Raise your hand. Everybody see you? <laughs> Ann Clement, clinical social work supervisor. Is Dr. Sinner here? Somewhere. There you are, Jeff. Unit chief. Thank you, Jeff. Any Tyler Four staff? I think I saw some Tyler Four staff. Well, welcome all of you if you're here. And let me talk about the project design team. Anthony Gerard, where are you, Anthony? Master of all pieces. Unbelievable. Our director of facilities. Jerry Cody. Jerry, where are you? There you are, Jerry. Eye for details is legendary. Thank you, Jerry. And Jerry, you actually pointed out to me in your before and after pictures the important place that this window, window Dan's gonna takes. Dan's going to laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted this window. Jerry and uh, Joan Eagleson, the principal architect, said we must have this window. The light is to the west. We must bring light to this unit. So thank you for fighting for that window, Jerry. We have an amazing architectural team, uh, Lavalli Brenzinger, Liliana Alvarado, I think I saw you, Liliana, thank you. All of the special design work here is truly to you, thank you. Barry Brenzinger, principal architect, chief owner, thank you very much. Excellent visionary. I'll work with you on any project. Joan Eagleson could not be here today. She was the primary architect on the project, but Joan sent an email she wanted me to read to all of you, and it says, the journey took many turns, and I'm sure it will take many more. We all know that in this room. But this is a wonderful milestone, and it is. Our contract team, H.P. Cummings, where are you folks? I think I saw you in the back. Ben Harrington? Ben? Stuart Nuttingham. Matt Nuttingham. Dan Smith. On time, on budget, thank you very much. We're also proud to have Consumer Advisory Council, who's been working with us all the way through. Kitty Gallagher, I saw Kitty. 
Vermont Psychiatric Survivors. Kitty, thank you. <laughs> Clear Matt, uh, National Alliance of Mental Illness, I believe is here. Maybe not. Whitney Nichols, I saw Whitney, consumer advocate. Thank you, Whit. There we go. Mary Postemsky, disability rights Vermont and advocate. Mary is here. Thank you, Mary. Michael Saboran, Vermont psychiatric survivors. There you are, Michael. Sherry Silvas, disability rights Vermont and advocate. They could not make it. Thank you. Jane Winterling. Vermont Psychiatric Survivors, and RAP, Wellness Recovery Action Plan. We're here. Jane. And Jane, we have a history going back to the SAMHSA grant on restraint and seclusion. Thank you for all your work. I went up with you and uh, Peter to talk about bringing this in the retreat. You did? That's right. Yeah. Thank you for all your support. And I just noticed out of the front of my behind you is Tony Signoli. Thank you, Tony. Old pal. Glad you're here, Tony. Uh, Gwen Yando is director of social worker retreat, also member of the Consumer Advisory Committee. Gwen, are you somewhere back there? And Peter Albert. Uh, how many miles has Peter put on his car? <laughs> oh my golly. Uh, Senior Vice President of Government Relations at the retreat. And in charge of our new company with Blue Cross. Photography. If you look in the photography around this, you will see that uh, John Geary's work is on the walls, a Vermont special photographer. I'm glad to have that here. Yeah. I just want to make a quick notion about the partnership. Patrick Flood, around the clock. How many hours did we spend on the phone, Patrick? Weekends, days, nights, hours and hours and hours. But thank you for your dedication to all of this project. And since Patrick's departure, Mary Moulton has taken your place, and now Mary and I and Peter are on the phone all the time. There you are, Mary. Thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, also legislators. I know we have many legislators in the room. If you would just raise your hand a little bit, we'll welcome you to be here. Thank you. Thank you welcome delegation. And now let me welcome Governor Shumlin. Uh, how truly fortunate we have been and the state has been to have your support for this project. When the hurricane hit, I think many people were aware of how critically important it was to have strong leadership in this state to rebuild. And the governor provided the skilled leadership, the speed of the rebuilding efforts all across the state are a testament to your strong leadership, your ability to stay the course for Vermonters. And you had a vision of a sea change in mental health and a system of mental health care that would change. And I think we would all agree that we're in that sea. I think we're halfway across it or more. Momentum is changing. We're moving more rapidly. The shore is in sight. And we need your continued leadership to continue the journey. So thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you so much.